Hello guys and welcome back to another M Crater tutorial. So today what we're going to actually work on is weather blocks. It was voted in by the community on my channel. It was actually between two different options. One was replantable saplings and the other one was the weathered blocks and the weathered blocks got about 70% of the vote. So we will be covering that today and I'll show you how it all works and how you can basically get things like copper blocks in M Crater before it's even released. There are four different blocks that I've made. There is the regular block that you basically craft, there is the mild rusty steel block, and then there is a moderate rusty steel block, and then finally there is the rusty steel block. So we're going to be grabbing the this one right here, and we're just going to start placing it down. Now I do want to warn you guys, this is sped up just for demonstration purposes. I will give you the exact values that you need for the actual copper blocks that they use in this current time. I don't know if it's going to be changed in the future because the Minecraft version is still under development. I figured I'd get ahead of everyone and create some copper blocks for you guys. So we're just going to place a bunch of these down and through update ticks what we're doing is we're going to basically wait for them to become rusted and as you can see that's random it's just going to start being random on what ones are placed and stuff like that and then I'll head over to these ones pretty shortly and before you know it uh, these ones will go to the next stage so as that and it's completely random I've made it that way because I don't think there actually goes the exact same way as the, them being placed at that particular time so I tried making them as random as possible and again this is at the final stage and then I'll just go over here and these ones are still falling behind but now they're catching up because we placed them a little bit later yeah overall that's basically how it all works you can basically break them and then pick them up now advan advanced mechanics you can basically polish them as well in now in the latest snapshot when I made this tutorial you weren't able to do that so I didn't add that script but basically this is the main script that you'll need for getting them to rust and stuff like that so I'll make sure to provide the code and everything in the actual workspace on my website so you guys be will be able to grab that so let's head into mcrater and I will show you how the script works works and explain it in detail. So the amount of blocks you can have is totally up to you. It's customizable that way as you want it and it only runs from one single update tick for all of those blocks. So we'll just go over the settings quickly and the important ones anyways. The rest is all customizable. None of this is really actually worried about for what you need to customize for specific values. If we go to the update tick, this is where the actual important part comes in because if you want it to be exactly like the vanilla copper blocks, then you're gonna have to adjust this value. I've actually left open the copper wiki page and there is some useful information down right under where it says use or usage. And right under here, this first line, it tells you the rough estimate of how many game ticks that the block actually needs to generate. Now we're more focused on 16 to 40 minutes, which is a little bit between values. Now it also can generate between 27 hours and 27 minutes. So the easiest way to go by is the ticks. Under this wiki page, what it basically is saying, it can go from Minecraft days from 50 to 82. If we calculate basically the amount of ticks that are in a day, because we're more focused on the days, not so much the actual overall game ticks. So there is 20 seconds in a tick. And then what we need to do is multiply that by 60. And then we get 1,200. But then we need to also take in consideration that there is 20 minutes per day. So we're going to calculate or multiply that by 20 as well. And we get a total of 24,000 game ticks. What we need to do in our procedure is we need to set this value for all the blocks to 24,000. And if you just 
click the up arrow and then down arrow again, it will adjust the code to that particular version. The rest of the settings are completely fine and don't need any configuration. You will need to make it a tile entity. This is for variables. I usually use variables in my procedures and stuff like that, so it's usually a good idea unless I state otherwise that you don't need it. We do need it for this one, for all the blocks, and then we're going to basically just set the inventory to zero and uncheck these two boxes. And there's no other procedures outside of the update tick, and I'll cover that in a second. No generation as well, but you can have it generated if you want to. That's completely up to you, but the most important thing is the update tick and the tile entity and then the actual tick rate. So let's go into the procedure next. Okay, so there is a lot of things going on in this section. I've minimized a couple things just so it's a little bit easier to follow. The first thing that we need to do is actually run it from a server side. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually build it over on this side right over here. Or we could do it under, I guess. So we're just going to add it, go to flow control, add a if statement. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a logic, a not statement. And then we're going to go to world data and then scroll down until we see the is provided world remote client side. And then we're going to place that down like that. That's the first main part of the procedure. This is so we can use random, basically random elements to our procedure. Next, what we need to do is we need to go to block procedures and then scroll down until we see a set MBT tag, the tag name, and then the other, basically the number version of it. So we're going to place that down right here. I would suggest keeping the name something that's easy to remember, something like day timer would probably be good. And then what we need to do is go to math and then get a math operator. We're going to move the number down to this section and we're going to set this to one. That's important. And then what we're going to do is go back to block procedures and then scroll down until we see get MBT number and then the tag name and then the location. So we're going to drop that right into the math operator and then we're going to drop that into our main thing. And then we're going to make sure that the same tag name is in the same location. So after you've done that, what we need to do is also create a local variable. It needs to be a number variable. So you would want to set it to number and then you want to call it something that will, that you, that can stand out so you understand what it is. I basically named my local variable random chance and that will be used for basically making it so it's more random. So if we want to make it more random, we need to go to custom variables, set local variable and then we're going to basically select our local variable. If you have global variables and other things, you have to find the one in the list. And then what we need to do is go to math operators, drag the random number right onto that local variable. And then this is where after, after that's all set up, this is where the code actually gets a little bit more complicated, but I'll do my best to explain. So we're going to go to flow control. We're going to drop that down here. We also need to click on the gear icon and go else. And drop an else right onto the thing so we have a little section like that so we can work with later on. The next thing that we need to do is test for that local variable. So we're going to go to logic, grab a dark blue operator, drop that right down here, and then we're going to set the operator by clicking on the drop down box right in the middle of it. And then we're going to set equal to or greater than. And then what we want to do is go and grab a math number and we're going to set the number to 0 0.8. That's the value that I had. And the number can be anywhere from 1 to 0. So any point form between that you can set it to. The way this is set up, equal to or greater than, any higher number will, from the higher number that you set to 1, will be the percent that it can actually generate or basically run the procedure at. So with 0 0.8, there's a 20% chance. The next thing that you need to do is grab a local variable and then we're going to just get local variable and we're going to place that right into that system right there. And now that we're working on that section, we also need to test if the day timer is set to or equal to or greater than 50. So what we're going to do is go to math operators, grab a dark blue operator, then we're going to go to flow control, grab a 
general if statement and then we're going to drop that if statement or the dark blue operator into the actual system and then what we're going to do is we're going to go equal to or greater than and then what we're going to do is we're going to test and then what we're going to do is basically test for the day timer variable so we're just going to duplicate that from our timer and we're going to need a value of equal to 50 so this is the same number of days that basically can be generated as it says on the wiki so 50 to 82 in-game days so that's what we're basically basing our script on because we want to test if it's random we'll be randomly updating it based if it's 50 or greater so that's basically how that part works now the next thing that we need to do is actually create another if statement exactly like the same one we're just going to duplicate that and put that down here and then what we're going to do is set this to 80 81 was it 82 so we're going to set this to 82. So if it's equal to or 82 days, then what we want to do is make sure that it's going to always update the actual block. So if it's over 82 or equal to, then we want to always update it. So that's why we've created the else statement is because it, the first part is random. It will randomly update between with a 20% chance. If it's not, if it's over that number, then we want to test if it's basically equal to or greater than 82, which is the cap on how many days it can actually go for, and then we want to always update it. So that's just basically an extra catch if it doesn't update within that time. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but I'll explain the best that I can. Once you get this part set up, you can just basically duplicate it over to the else statement and you'll be fine to go. Let's just drag this part out so you guys can see what's going on. It's right in this section here for the top part. So what we're doing is we're testing for the specific type of block that it currently is at. And then what we're doing is we're basically replacing it up to the next stage. We're keeping the state of it and we're keeping the MBT time or the MP MBT and inventory variables. And then what we're doing is we're resetting the day timer to zero. So this is the day timer, what we set up here. And we're doing that for the first stage, the block that is not rusted, the medium size or the lightly rusted block, the mild rusty steel block. And then we have the one that is moderately rusty steel. You don't have to do that for your last stage. Your last stage doesn't actually need it because it's no longer needing to be updated. So this is obviously replacing it to the last stage, the, the stage, the moderately rusty steel block. So it's replacing it to that, which basically gets tested after. And then this is the mild rusty steel block, which it's replacing, which will be later tested in that procedure. So let's quickly create that procedure here. What we need to do is go to local variables, or pardon me, flow control. We're going to grab an if statement. We're going to drop that down here. We're going to click on the gear icon and dra grab the amount of if statements or else if statements that you have for your amount of blocks that you're basically adding. We have a total of four blocks. Our, one is our last stage, so we need three if statement, three conditions. Next, what we need to do is we need to actually test for that block so we're going to go to logic grab a yellow operator drop that into that place right there we're going to go to block procedures scroll down until we see get block at we're going to drop that into our first block our first location for the yellow operator and then what we want to do is to go to the minecraft components grab the yellow operator and then what we're going to do is select our first stage for the unrusted block version and then we're going to duplicate that two more times and update it to our second stage and then finally our, our part yeah our second stage and then our third stage and then the fourth stage will be not needed after that what we need to do is replace the block so we're going to go back to block procedures and then somewhere around the top there should be replace block at and then the location and then the type of block and then the other two check boxes you want to grab that place that right there and then you want to set this to your second stage and you want to enable this checkbox right here and then you want to duplicate that another time and we're going to duplicate that one more time and then we're going to place that in our other two if statements 
Then what we're going to do is update the other the blocks to what blocks we're replacing it with. After we've done that, we have one last thing that we need to do, and that is to set the MBT timer to zero again. So to, the easiest way to do that is just go to block procedures and then scroll down until you see set MBT tag, and then we're just going to drop that at the end. We're going to copy the timer name, and we're going to place that right here. And then we're just going to make sure that that's run at the end of the procedure. Now once you've done that, what you can do is just duplicate this and place that in your other part where it's equal to or greater than 82 days. So what this is basically doing is now that we set our update tick to happen every 24,000 ticks, which is exactly one day in Minecraft, what we're doing is now testing if it's random between 50 and if it's between that and the 82. So it'll be randomly updating between those two numbers there and we're basically just replacing the block so that's all there is to it so hopefully you guys found this tutorial useful if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out